Welcome to part two, where we look at uh, some drum programming examples and uh, some concepts surrounding drum programming and where certain elements came from and why uh, certain elements came in from the equipment being used. So I've got a uh, four bar loop here up on the screen um, that is a Ashford and Simpson song. Um, it's the uh, second breakdown I think but uh, it serves a purpose here because it has a uh, it's a four bar loop that has um, uh, two sections to it that are made out of A and B patterns. I'll get into this uh, in this video but let's just take a listen to begin with. So as you can hear there, um, you've got uh, focusing on the on the um, bass line really as a key to where you are in the um, sections. The first uh, part A and B are uh, variations of themselves. You have um, the same drum pattern and the bass line uh, plays a high note at the end of the first bar and a low note at the end of the second bar. Oh, I'm sorry, I went wrong around, but get the point. And then you have the strings that play um, an upward um, section uh, at the beginning of the first one and a downward section at the end of the end of the second to feed back into the um, part one A. Now this is uh, mimicked in a lot of house tracks. You'll have these um, two bar repeating sections that then get expanded out into four and eight bar um, segments. Um, focusing on the bass on the example there, it doesn't move very much in the first uh, two bars and then it goes down um, uh, a step or two and then back up um, to above where it started to recycle back in. Um, so what I've done here is a, a kind of um, rough uh, version of what uh, what the bass is doing. You can see it starts off an E, we're just working a C major here and then we've got a C back up to G to come back round again. This is again split out over one bar cycles with a, a drum pattern. So if I play the uh, the programmed example So there's some subtle changes. Uh, the bass stays the same because it's just one loop. It's a four bar loop split out over um, single bars. The pattern 1A is uh, fairly straightforward. It's just a fall to the floor with a snare with a clap actually on the uh, backbeat and 16, uh, well, eight notes, uh, hi-hats, you know, your standard um, one and two and. And then you've got uh, essentially the same thing happening on the part B one, except for an extra kick. Um, so what that does is just drives a little bit of energy into the um, part two, uh, part two A, which is the same as part one. So you've introduced the theme, a pattern, you've then varied it, and then you've given them a home again. You've, you've brought them back to the original, and then uh, part 2B is where you've got a, a, a shuffle on the hat and then a drum roll on the kick drum to feed back in to the first one, which is again the same as the part, um, part 2A. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, bass line is, ma the majority of the bass line is, is offbeat. You have uh, first and second that are on and then everything else is off after it which gives you a nice forward momentum. Um, focusing on the drums here though, uh, this is um, a fairly standard, I would call this really a disco uh, beat. Um, honestly if you were to be uh, making a house um, uh, a house track, we just get this uh, blank clip rolling. We'll have the bass going. 
we still have this 4-4. Uh, four, four. And you can hear how that interacts with the bass line. And we still want a clap. This was used in disco a little bit, but it's a very, very synonymous uh, sound with house music. We then want some high, uh, high frequency information, so we're going to bring in a, um, uh, a closed hi-hat. Now, you will also hear this pattern, which I'll do. This is more um, for the acid house variety, where the, the drums are a lot stripped, further stripped back and you can get away with this. What I prefer to do is, instead of having so many hi-hats, I prefer to have uh, eighth notes hi-hats and then use the ride cymbal. just adds a bit of flavor and a bit of layering. Um, the worst thing you can do when making house is make it boring or repetitive uh, in terms of the sounds we're using. It's all about layering the sounds. So we've got this. This is where I consider it to be a kind of uh, a basic beat. Uh, we can add a few things though. We can make our kick drums a little bit more interesting by adding some toms alongside them. Adds a little bit of picture information to the um, kick drum. And then the one thing that will really set off a, ho a house track um, is to bring in an open a hi-hat on the offbeat. Um, which is fine. It's a uh, it's a bit cliche at this point, but it is uh, no less valid. I'm going to raise this uh, last hi hat to a crash, and then I'm going to bring in a rim shot. variation. Now we could add something in this section of the first bar, maybe a cowbell would be uh, a, a classic choice. And maybe we drop a rim shot here to tie in. I just want to mention something here. What I've done here is broken a, uh, a rule. I've put a snare on the uh, first hit of the second bar. Now what I'm doing here is playing with uh, what's called polymeter. Um, 
so I'm I'm blurring the line as to where my uh, my true reset point or my one is. So I have one here, which I've built up with all these sounds, so that you know that it definitely is one. You know, and the bass hits and everything comes in. Now on this on this two, maybe I take this tom out and the clap uh, or the hi hat, and it will. Um, de-emphasize that second bar which will bring the feeling that maybe you, the one bar isn't maybe it's half time maybe 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 it confuses the listener slightly but still there's still the drive and the chords still change it just adds a bit of interest See how that changes the vibe slightly? These are all things that you can do when you're messing around with your drum programs, especially when you're working within two block, two beat, um, sorry, two bar sections, because all of a sudden, you, as when you're right, when you're making the songs, you 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 start to consider your two bar loops as um, as one block. They're um, they're no longer um, just one bar where everything has to kind of work within this one bar system. It's like, you know, you can work with. Um, you can start implying a different time signature just in how you program certain elements in your drum track. Um, you'll see this with uh, a lot of the early Acid House where things didn't, um, you know, arpeggios were done on a, um, a 32 note scale where they didn't repeat every um, every bar, every four bars or every two bars. They repeated every 32 bars. And maybe the song is only 200 bars long. So maybe you'd only get two and a half repeats, which just adds a little bit of random to the, uh, to the song. Um, and, and that's kind of important when you're messing around with uh, what can end up being quite a repetitive genre, what you do with all the percussion elements. I mean, we're working just within the confines of a, a kind of modified 707 here, which was one drum box. Um, you know, you've got uh, a kick, You've got the instruments on the side there. There was a sister um, device to this called the 727 that had uh, percussion elements, you know, uh, Latin percussion elements, whistle blasts, agogos, maracas, claves, congos, bongos, that sort of thing. Now, when you bring all of those instruments in alongside this and you start playing with, um, you know, deliberately putting things out of time or off beat, as you really call it, you can you can completely change um, the style, uh, the style is, you can make it, you can push it further away from the kind of traditional, um, you know, marching drum, uh, you know, rigid block form drums. And I think that's where a lot of house music gets quite interesting is when you've got, especially when you get into like the 90s, um, experimental house where you've got people layering um, out of time samples or samples that don't loop within one bar. Maybe they're maybe the maybe they've got a percussion loop that only loops that far. So it's resetting, you know, two and a half times in a two bar loop. That's when you can start having some fun with it. But you can still start you can start to work in that way with with a with a basic sixteen step um, workflow. You just have to consider like. You know, maybe don't start a beat. Maybe like this is something that I do sometimes. I'll, I'll, I'll go, okay, let's let's start with a track. I'm going to start with the rim shot. I'm not allowed to put anything on the on the downbeats. So I will go, okay, I'll put uh, put one I put one here, uh, there, there, and I'll just see what this sounds like. You know, maybe this needs to be the you know. And then, you know, bring in, uh, I don't know, let's bring in a cowbell. And a tambourine.
let's make a melodic tom pattern. Something, uh... Uh, let's let's loop this. Let's bring this over. Bring it back a step so that it doesn't loop nicely. Because then once you've got this, which doesn't sound very focused or anything, when you do put the 4-4 four four in, Maybe these need to go. can end up with more interesting things than if you just always focus on the kick drum you know the kick drum's a safe bet we all know we all know that it's going to end up with that but there's other things that you can add into a, a house um drum set that aren't um that aren't the kick drum uh and especially it's so easy to get sidetracked and just just start off you know just open a session and do that and just end up with you know, the same thing again and again and again. But anyway, I hope that's uh, opened up some ideas. Um, not necessarily this uh, this pattern we ended up here, but definitely uh, this pattern here that we have. You know, that's, um, that's not a bad start. I mean, you could take that and you could uh, t you know, build into this and, you know, start off with less elements and bring them in as you go on. <laughs> 